Well, good Saturday morning to you guys. We are getting ready to go to work this morning. But we're not taking Grandma. We're taking Junior's car. Why? Well, it needs a ball joint. So that's what we're going to be doing today on this episode. Why does it smell like dirty old Ron Subaru in here? Junior? Are you vaping again? Anyways, we've got to make a quick stop down at the local Napa store to pick up some uh, windshield washer fluid that they're having a sale on and the ball joint for this car. So, let's go tour. Who needs a pickup truck when you got a Dodge Avenger? There's 12 cases of Napa brand windshield washer fluid. A wrap. They don't go on sale very often when they do. We try and stock up because we use quite a bit of it. Every vehicle, we top it up to make sure it's one less thing or one less light on, on the dash. So let's head up to the shop. tell which ball joint it is is basically just to grab the bottom of the wheel and give it a little shake and I can feel this one has got some movement in it so this is the one that we're going to be changing. First we're going to turn the air on. So normally <clears throat> a lot of guys wouldn't uh, bother changing out this ball joint because they're just going to turn around and sell the car. Well, that is the plan is we're going to sell the car, but I don't feel comfortable letting this go with a loose ball joint uh, and just leaving it up to somebody else to chance. So, you know, it's the right thing to do. This ball joint only costs us about 25 or 30 bucks. And it's what little bit of time it's going to take me to change it. We might as well be safe about it and make sure that when I sell this car or Alex sells this car, that it's going to go to the right person, uh, whether they know how to fix a car or not and it's gonna be safe. So one thing you gotta be careful about when you're doing these ball joints is because you're basically let, letting this whole spindle loose is your axle will go right into the side of the transmission into the differential. And if you're not careful, if you swing this out too far this way, like this way, uh, you could possibly pull out the uh, axle and uh, have a big problem on your hands. So. These ball joints are basically, they're kind of pressed in. They've got a lock ring on the top. We're going to get our ball joint pressed and we are going to uh, press that up through. So this kind of leads me to another question that uh, I get asked a lot or that we've run into in the past that, you know, when you sell a car, uh, obviously if you sell something private sale, it's going to be as is. So, you know, the customer gets what they get. It's buyer beware. In the used car industry, you run into situations where, you know, you buy a car and how long is an appropriate time that you stand behind that vehicle? Well, you know, in New Brunswick, the province doesn't dictate a specific warranty. They just say you have to warranty the car. So, you know, is 30 days long enough? Is 60 days long enough? And you guys know if you've been watching the channel uh, that we give a 90 day warranty. But even at like 120 days or 180 days or you know a year down the road, at what point is a defect in the car a defect in the car that's not responsible to the selling dealer? I mean, we, we understand that we don't make these cars and we do everything that we can to make sure that when they go out the door that they are trouble free. Now, the reason why we give that 90 day warranty is because a lot of the times you just don't know. But I'm interested to find out from you guys what you think. Leave your comments down below and tell me how long after the warranty expires on a used car should the dealer really be, you know, liable for anything. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Okay, so we've got our ball joint press in place here and now we're just going to use the air to uh, see if we can't get it uh, 
pressed out of there. And there's the uh, old ball joint and we really, we just, we replaced this not too long ago in this car, but uh, it's a non-serviceable ball joint, which means there's no grease fitting. And uh, that's just the way they make it. If you want to pay a few extra dollars and get a Moog uh, or a Napa Proformer or something like that, then you're going to get one with the grease fitting so you can service that. But we're just going to replace it with another one of these because it is a, a warranty item and uh, put it back together. So there's the new one. And we just got to get it pressed back into place the same way we took out the other one. Now the trouble I'm having is I don't have the adapter to fit up top here. So I think what I'm going to have to do is end up taking the old hammer and bumping her into place. Alright, so now that we got the ball joint pressed in there, we've got to take our retainer clip and instead of snap ring pliers and uh, get it poked in there. There we go. All right, so now that that's in there, we can just start putting her back together. Just like so. And grab our new nut, cram it on there, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. <laughs> oh, wrong way. And there we go. So in a world where flat rate shops charge you by the book, flat rate charge on this ball joint would have been 1.5 hours. So at $65 an hour, which is what we charge, that's about 90 bucks. I just did it in about 20 minutes all together. And not because I have a lot of experience with ball joints, but because I had the right tools, I did have the know-how, and everything was available to me. So sometimes when you go into a shop that's flat rate, just because they do it quicker, doesn't mean you necessarily should be paying less. It takes those guys a lot of time and a lot of training to get as good as they do and to pay for the right tools and to have the hoist and the right shop to be able to put these things together for you. But one thing to keep in mind is that our shop, we are not flat rate. We do just charge straight time. So if you brought this vehicle in to get the job done, we likely would have charged you about a half an hour for the time, from the time the vehicle came in to the time we got our tools cleaned up and back out of the shop again. So every shop is different. So in exchange for me doing a ball joint for Junior, he's doing a little buff job on my car. What a good kid. What a shine door, Junior. Yeah, she needs it. Needs a lot of love. Oh yeah. So right now it is only 10.30, we're here for another hour and a half, so I'm gonna grab the other buffer, give him a hand, make this job go a little bit quicker on this great big boat. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video as we end out another great weekend here at the campground. Guys, I am still looking for some license plates. If you have any, my addresses are in the description box down below. I'm just looking for some for the old wall art project. We are almost there and we should be able to get that finished up in the very near future. Also, the shop truck should be back together very soon with new rear end gears. I hope to get a little bit of that repair on film for you guys, just so you can see just how milky and yucky it was inside that rear diff. Also, T-shirts are available at my bonfire store. 
which is the first link in the description box below. You can pick up your very own Old Car Auto Guy t-shirt. I do want to give a quick shout out to a fella who sent me some license plates. His name is Sean and he's got a channel and his channel name is right here for I Am Caper. He's also got t-shirts and he was lucky, I was lucky enough for him to send me this one. So I'm wearing it today in this video in hopes that you guys will go over and check out his channel and uh, give him some love and build that subscription base. He's climbed up over 100 and uh, we just want to get him to grow as another fellow Canadian YouTuber. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.